live in an apartment with my girlfriend. We moved in three and a half years ago, and we've never had any problems until the summer of last year. It was a typical night. My girlfriend had to work late, so I was home alone for the evening. Our room is located on the first floor, facing the back of the parking lot, so it's usually pretty quiet since most of the cars either park in the garages or at the front of the lot at night. As I was getting out of the shower, I heard something that totally caught me off guard. It sounded like a baby was screaming bloody murder outside, so I quickly ran up to the window to look out. The lighting in the back of the parking lot has always been poor, but I was able to make out a dumpster and a few cars parked along the spots. The crying and screaming continued, so I opened up the window to try to narrow down where it was coming from. As I opened the window, I was shocked to realize how loud it actually was. Initially thinking that it could have just been a temper tantrum, I was now starting to panic. There was absolutely nobody in the parking lot, but the screaming sounded like it was, so I hurriedly got dressed and slipped down my shoes to go outside and look. As I approached the source of the noise, I started to realize that it was coming from the dumpsters, and my heart sank. The thought of someone putting a baby inside of a dumpster sickened me, and I ran over as fast as I could. I opened the gate encompassing the two dumpsters, and flipped the lid open to check. There was nothing except for trash in the first one, so I quickly moved over to the second one and did the same. Nothing. It didn't make sense, because I was definitely near the source of the screaming and crying, so I ran around to the back of the gate behind the dumpsters outside. What I saw made me freeze in my steps. There, on the ground behind the dumpsters, was a large speaker, maybe about the size of a microwave. It was playing a recording of a baby crying over and over on a loop, with the volume turned up to the max. Not really giving it any thought, I bent down and turned off the speaker, still trying to take in what had just happened. Something didn't feel right. Now that it was completely silent in the parking lot, I was able to hear the sound of multiple footsteps quickly approaching me. They were coming from the grass hill behind the dumpsters, so I couldn't see anything until they reached the top. Once I did, I went into a full-out panic. Two hooded people were running down the hill straight towards me. I got up and sprinted towards the building, not even looking back to see if I was still being followed. I buzzed myself in, slammed the door behind me, and sprinted down the hallway to our room. Once inside, I locked the door and looked out the back window, but they were gone. It was now eerily silent, and I was left standing there in total disbelief. Suddenly, I heard a knock on my door, and my entire body tensed up. I crept up to the door and looked through the people to see that it was my neighbor Chris, who lives directly next to us. I've always been friendly with Chris, so I opened the door up and let him in. His first words were, What the hell just happened out there? I told him everything I had just witnessed, only to find out that he watched the whole thing from his window and had already called the police. Just to ensure my sanity, he also saw two hooded figures emerge at the top of the hill while I was out there. The police arrived minutes later and searched the area, but the people who had set this up were obviously now gone. I called my girlfriend and warned her about this happening, and I told her to park in the front when she got home. This has been something that none of us have ever been able to explain. We've never had the slightest issue while living here, so this was obviously a major shock to all of us. Sure, it all could have been some kids playing a prank, but I really don't think it was that. It really seemed like they wanted to lure someone out there, and I took the bait. Had I not gotten away, who knows what might have happened. I'm just glad that I was home at the time and my girlfriend wasn't, because she definitely would have gone out there if she heard it. So just for context, I often have trouble sleeping due to poor self-control with social media usage. This was one of those nights which kept dragging on and on, and I ended up getting up from my computer to grab something to drink from the kitchen. In the corridor, I noticed a cockroach and spent some time chasing it, trying to pick it up with a piece of paper and throw it outside from our balcony. I ended up losing track of it when it scampered off behind the sofa, so I eventually gave up and decided to leave it. That's when I heard the doorknob of our apartment door twisting down. I live with two other roommates, so I'm quite used to the sound of the door being unlocked, but this wasn't that. It was just the metal creaking of the doorknob being pressed. At first, I thought maybe the sound came from my room. I hadn't closed the door, and with most of our balconies and windows being left open at night, we usually have a draft that makes doors open and close on their own. I thought the metallic sound could have been the hinges on the door from my room, but as I went back to the corridor, I knew it wasn't the hinges in my room. 
The sound was clearly coming from the main apartment door, and I could see the doorknob slowly pressing down, then releasing. I stood there watching as it continued to repeat a few times. I was now absolutely certain that there was someone outside the door, but I had no idea who it was. I briefly considered if it was one of my roommates, but for one, they all have their own keys and would be able to unlock the door, and secondly, I remember seeing all of them return much earlier in the evening. Plus, if one of them did somehow end up outside without their key, why wouldn't they say anything while they were trying to get in? My second assumption was that it was a robber, trying people's doors in the middle of the night to see if anyone had accidentally left theirs open, to sneak in and steal stuff, but that turned out to be very unlikely. I grabbed the doorknob and held it up to stop the person on the other side from pressing it, then said, What the hell? What are you doing? I wanted it to sound aggressive, but it came out very uneven and honestly pathetic. No response. That was already too much. They definitely heard me. Our walls aren't soundproofed, so you can hear pretty clearly in and out of the apartment, but nothing, not a word, no sound of panic or running. After a moment of silence, they tried the doorknob again. I banged on the door, thinking that maybe they didn't speak English, and that's when the most terrifying part happened. I don't know if it was real or just my imagination, but I swear I could hear a soft tapping on the door. It was quiet and a bit fast, like someone drumming their fingers, very different from my banging. I immediately thought their tapping must be some sort of response to my knocking. For a moment, I considered settling the matter myself, preparing to unlock the door, but I just couldn't. I was frozen with fear, and I had the strong sense that this was exactly what they were waiting for. I thought this might have been their plan, taunting me with the doorknob and tapping, waiting for the moment I got angry enough to unlock the door and go outside. So I didn't open the door. I stood there holding the knife, and I said, I don't know who you are or what you want, but you need to leave. Stop trying to open the door and go away. If you keep trying, I'll call the police. Again, it sounded much weaker and shakier than I wanted it to. Yet again, there was absolutely no response from the other side. There was a moment of silence before the doorknob started being pressed again. That was it. I called 911 and gave them my address, explaining the situation to the dispatcher. As I was talking, the door didn't move or make any noises. After I hung up the phone, I saw the doorknob pressed down one more time, and then it stopped for good. The last thing of note is that I eventually heard the main door of the apartment block clicking shut. I realized that whoever it was must have gone downstairs and exited the building, so I rushed out of the balcony to see if I could catch a glimpse of them. I didn't see anything. They must have either left very quickly or kept close to the wall on the sidewalk, which wasn't visible as it was blocked by the balconies from the floor below. The police arrived shortly after, and I had to awkwardly re-explain the situation to them. They asked me if it could have been a drunk or someone trying to get in their own apartment, but that was obviously nonsense. A drunk would have moved around more and made noise, while a person trying to get in their own apartment would have tried the key and wouldn't press the doorknob so slowly and deliberately. The police checked every floor and found nobody, so the person had probably left, like I thought. I felt bad for the officers who looked somewhat indifferent to the whole thing. I apologized a few times for making them come out at such a late hour and for such a trivial thing. The whole situation was so surreal that explaining it felt stupid and ridiculous. It's really unsettling not knowing what the person was there to do, and I always wonder what would have happened if I had opened that door. That person hasn't returned since that night, at least to my knowledge. I used to live in a small apartment building just outside the main city. It was an old traditional flat, with a tiny living room, a small kitchen, and a comfortable bedroom. I was in my 20s, so I didn't have enough savings or a good job to afford a lavish duplex in the city. Despite the shady location, I unhesitatingly moved in. During those days, I was working overtime till 9pm, so I'd return back home late at night. The apartment seemed to be quite safe even though not many people lived there. However, there was an old man a couple doors down who creeped the hell out of me. I grew up with my grandparents, so I didn't mind the presence of elderly people, but trust me, he was different, and not in a good way. There was a deep scar across his right eye, substantially profound creases on his forehead, and thin pale lips. For the first two days, I tried to suppress my fear and smile at him. However, he never reciprocated the same. Instead, he would give me this glare with his lips sealed together. 
I decided it was best to ignore him, so I tried to avoid eye contact with him as much as possible. One night, I came back home quite stressed out. The company that I was working for was going through a restructuring process, so there were a lot of responsibilities on my head. As soon as I reached my apartment, I slammed the door and jumped straight into bed. I turned off all the lights and shut my eyes tightly, but no matter how much I tried, I couldn't fall asleep. All that I could think about was work. Suddenly, I heard an odd sound outside the main door. My flat was quite small, so even the slightest noise in the corridor could be audible. I became alert and tried to comprehend the sound. It was the sound of a man coughing in the hallway. My mind came to a pause. I checked the time. It was just past 12.30 a.m. No one would be awake at this hour, I thought to myself, and tried to disregard the sound. But all my efforts went in vain since the noise became more vivid and clear with every passing second. What's even more terrifying is that the coughing sound had now been accompanied by banging on my door. I immediately jumped out of the bed and tiptoed towards the main door darting through the small peephole. What I saw shook me to my core. There was a figure of a man outside my door. He was standing with his head down, so I couldn't see his face. All at once, a familiar person crossed my mind. The old man. He always stared at me like he was planning something insidious. I was certain that it was him. I panicked around the room, scouring for my phone, but I couldn't find it. My stomach clenched with the sound of a vigorous blow on the door. It felt like my door would be flung open anytime soon. Abruptly, my worst nightmare became true. The main door opened with a loud bang. My body felt numb as terror coursed through my veins. Despite the utmost terror, I still managed to run and hide underneath the dining room table. My heart hammered inside my chest and tears flowed down my cheeks uncontrollably in horror as I crouched underneath with my hands covering my mouth. Gradually, the man dragged his feet inside my apartment. Even though it was dark, I was still able to see glimpses of the man's body. My hands were shaking, and so was my entire body. I was in a complete state of panic. I had never felt so helpless before. In a matter of time, the footsteps wandered towards me, like as if he had spotted me at my hideout. I shut my eyes in panic, prayed to God, and counted to ten inside my head. At the count of ten, I opened my eyes and found the man staring at me. With my cold and clammy hands, I pushed the man and tried to run. I screamed with a shaky voice. The man didn't even hinge a bit by my push. He began to wildly run towards me with a weapon in his hands. At that point, all I could do was scream and shout. I was freighted down to the sole of my shoes, yet I hollered as loud as I could. Suddenly, I heard a group of men shouting to back off. Those men were a group of policemen. They quickly dragged the man out of my apartment. As they turned on the light, I noticed that it wasn't the old man I had suspected. It was somebody else, and I'd never seen them before in my life. Shortly after, the cops told me that the old man who lived a couple doors down was the one who had called them and helped to save my life. Apparently, he had overheard me screaming and instantly called the cops. I felt very guilty for suspecting him, and I went over to his room to thank him. After a bit of chit-chat, he opened up to me that he endured the deep wound near his eyes while saving his granddaughter's life from a robbery, and since his granddaughter looked like me, he felt a strong connection towards me. It's heartbreaking that he passed away this year, and I have shared this story in his memory.